All right, a couple other things of note. On the first run, we took four samples. We took a sample point out of the tank and a sample out of the overflow four times. Actually, the fourth time we'd run out on the tank, so we only got half a sample set on the four sample. So that is two samples in each sample set. Gotcha. All right, here they are right here. Basically what we did was we ran the speed up and monitored the back pressure on the overflow to try to maintain a certain pressure. Essentially going from zero back pressure, three, 10, and 24 PSI back pressure, which was at 10 GPM, 16 GPM, and 24, G 24 33 GPM respectively. Uh, you can see here, we only got three samples out of the tank. One well, of the other things that's interesting to notice, we're gonna rehydrate these, homogenize them, and spin them down in the uh, in a you know in a lab centrifuge. But if we look, let's get these out of the way. What we're gonna look here is you got the first one. We have some uh, sediment. We have a few uh, floaters with some entrained gas. The second one, same deal. A little bit more on top. Same on the bottom, more on top, and here we've got the most. So it seems just this is uh, in no way conclusive, but based on a visual sight, it seems that the more back pressure and the more GBM we put through, the the greater the uh, the greater the flotation. Or one one theory would be the larger amount of entrained gas. The other theory on this is uh, we're, we are assuming homogeneity in the tank because the agitator is on at full speed, but there is certainly the chance that this sample was a full tank. This sample was getting near the empty, the end of the tank, getting near empty. And therefore, if, you're, if it is not homogenous and the solids or suspended hot materials are not as suspended as we would believe or hope, that as the bottom cone is being washed out of uh, the tank, we're, we're cleaning off and getting a lot more sediment. So that, that's one other thing we need to consider.